Greetings and salutations from central Louisiana, just a few miles west of Dry Prong. Today's project concerns a clamp for the saddle on my sulky for my David Bradley pull behind, walk behind tractor with the sulky with the hay rake on it. This is an original that I have on another sulky that I was trying to come close to. And okay, I have this clamp piece that I was searching for for the David Bradley. I haven't found it any, in any used areas. That's where somebody is parting something out. It's 703M. It is the clamp for the David Bradley hitch. The bolt comes through here into a turn handle which tightens it down on the saddle. And I tried to find some folks that might cast this for me or, you know, get it cut out CNC and sadly the prep I need to do for it and the, the electronic files they currently want for this kind of stuff, I'm incapable of doing here. So what I've done is I have a block of aluminum that I found online. You know, that's at a block. That's what it is. It's a block, and I have rough sketched out the dimensions of what I'm looking for, and I'm drilling holes. This will be for the bolt that comes through the, from the top to clamp it down. And then on the side, I have another bolt that I need to clear out here in just a second, which is the jaw for a clamp on it to clamp it down but then after that it's come down to I reckon a lot of hard work because I'm not sure how I'm going to hog it down to close to that shape but you know it doesn't have to be exact all it has to do is function so that's where I'm going I'll show you when I get finished Yes, I've been step drilling coming up in sizes. I happen to have a little larger bit set. It looks like this side set is going to be closer to 5 eighths while the top hole is going to be closer to 9 sixteenths. But I'm kind of gauging it as I go against the original. It's aluminum cuts a little easier than I thought when steel would. But it's, I have a bad habit of trying to hog it out like I would a piece of wood or two before. So I'm having to kind of learn new techniques as we go on here. Yes, I do actually use some high-tech tools at times. Here's my Harbor Freight digital caliper. And I've got this new super duper high expensive scribe here made out of a 10 penny nail and a little bit of time to spin the point down on it. But hey, when you work in a Rube Goldberg style, you just gotta do what works. As we continue on, I have stepped up to a 5 8 inch bit, which is the closest to what I measured the saddle bar to be. So, and I just made the top center hole the same. I'll get this other hole finished through and then I'll have to try to cut it down a little bit to size. And then after that, I suspect there's going to be a lot of hogging down with the carbide burr. Luckily, I've got an inline grinder. I'll put the burr on and we'll see how that works out. Yes, you can cut aluminum on a table saw very slowly, very carefully. And I chose a carbide tip blade that I had tried to have sharpened one time before and they said it was cracked up. So a sacrificial blade and very carefully cutting. This is an older blade, by the way. Yes, I did manage to cut it with the, an old carbide tip blade. It had gotten somewhat dull and they said they wouldn't resharpen it because it was chipped teeth. But it did a pretty fair job. You do it rather slowly, don't get in a hurry. You can't hog it through like you wouldn't you cut in a two before. But that's, it did do what I asked. So we shall move onward. And getting ready, I have to say it's going to be a lot of hogging of this to get it down to looking like this. But hey, I'm a wood carver. I can do it. You ain't going to have no hollow in there like that, but it's going to look good. 
getting closer and closer to using hand tools, which is going to be fun. But, you know, I'm trying my best not to do anything super dangerous with the table saw. Somebody said that's not your normal mode, but yeah, that's what I'm trying to do. As I often say, just because I do stupid things doesn't mean you need to do it too. As I push forward, it's getting closer to this. No ways to go yet. I'm not going to hollow this out, of course. This is cast iron and that's aluminum. But the aluminum will be strong enough to do what I got to do with it. It's got a lot of hogging yet to do get a lot of this other waste off. Okay, let's recap. This is the original that I was trying to duplicate. Now, that's not a good word, duplicate. Make an equivalent example of it to use on my David Bradley sulky with the hay rake. And I had an aluminum block that I cut down and I have worked on. And this is the equivalent of it. This may not be as pretty or as stylized, but it'll get the job done. I may spend some more time polishing out some of the machining marks I've got on it, but hey, the main thing is to get something that would work. And I've already tried it. This thing works, no problem. Although, you know, if any of y'all got an extra one or two of these laying around, I'd like to have them. Save me a lot of trouble making any more of these because I'm not a metal shop man. I don't have a lot of metal working tools. So I kind of have to work at it as I can with what I got. But yes, this is an equivalent. It is not as pretty or stylized as the original, but it will work. And forgive me, there's a miscut right here on, on next to my thumb that I had made. But like I say, it doesn't affect the functionality or usability of it, but this will work. Which going on and spouting out a bit more, a piece of flat steel with an ear welded here and here on it, a hole drill through it would do about the same thing. You know, you might have to put two, two little bars up here to keep it centered where you want it. But yeah, this is gonna work. It's not very pretty, not very elegant, but it is functional. Thank you and have a good day.